Hello everyone, Michael O'Brien here, and today we're gonna do another no cap video. Today's topic, we're gonna be talking about unconscious racial bias. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video. This is a no cap video where I get to take off my hat, let my hair down, so to speak, and just talk about things uh, that I think are really important to learn. So on a really serious note, uh, today we're going to talk about something, a subject that is really uh, a, a serious matter, right? And we're going to talk about unconscious racial biases. So if you get easily offended by uh, really serious topics of talking about race or sexual orientation or um, just like, you know, minorities or anything like that, maybe this isn't the video for you. I got plenty of other videos on the channel talking about light, fluffy things, but this is going to be a sort of serious video uh, where we're going to talk about some serious topics. I hope you guys stick around for this because I think it's very, very important. Uh, before we do, though, just a couple of announcements. If you have not already done so, please make sure to click the subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell. That way you guys know every time I upload a new video. If you'd like to support the channel for just $1 a month, consider clicking the join button and becoming a member. Members will get access to a bunch of cool stuff, including tutorials, early access to videos, emojis, badges, and even discounts in the O'Brien Magic Shop. All of that for just $1 a month. What are you waiting for? It's only a dollar. You get like 50 plus tutorials. You don't have to wait for these videos to come out. And if you want to buy stuff in my Magic Shop, you're going to get some discounts. All of that's worth it. Anyways, thank you so much to all of my members, all of my subscribers, and all of you at home for watching these videos. It's because of you that I'm able to keep this channel going. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. All right, let's go ahead and dive into the topic of this video now. So there is something that I've noticed uh, that tends to happen in the magic community, and not just in the magic community. This isn't a magician thing. This is kind of something that happens in pretty much any community, and that is unconscious racial bias. Now, what do I mean when I say unconscious racial bias? All I'm talking about is in our minds, we have these preconceived notions about other people. We don't know those people, but based solely on how they look. So for example, I see someone, let's just say a white dude with tattoos all over his whole body. And the first thing I think is like, oh, this guy's probably in like a motorcycle gang or something, right? Um, so you have these unconscious biases just based on how people look. And these can be all matter of different things, right? Uh, these can be how people look, how they talk, uh, if they have an accent, um, the way that they carry themselves, if they look like they're dressed in really nice clothing versus if they're dressed in like really poor clothing, right? Um, so... All of these things play a crucial element to it. And what I wanted to talk about specifically today was unconscious racial bias. So this is um, coming up with these preconceived notions of other people based on their skin color or their racial ethnicities and um, what we can do to kind of combat that a little bit. So I wanted to kind of give you guys a little, uh, I guess you can call this an experiment. Sorry, my hair is like going crazy. I don't know what's going on. That's why I wear the hat, by the way, because like stuff like this likes to happen. So um, let's talk about um, this little experiment that myself and a few other magicians actually performed. Now, I'm not going to mention their names in here. If they want credit, um, they can leave a comment in the comment section below and they can out themselves if they want to, or uh, I'll get permission from them and I'll credit them in the description in the link below if you guys want to know who they are. Um, but for the sake of anonymity, I can't talk today. For the sake of anonymity, I'm not going to mention their names in this. Um, but there were three other performers um, who were kind of involved in this. And um, essentially what the experiment was, was a magician of color <clears throat> um, performed some kind of slight or some kind of control or just demonstrating a move that they're working on. And keep in mind, this wasn't posted in a public forum. This wasn't like on their Facebook wall. This was in like a magician's group on Facebook where only magicians were in that group. 
Only magicians who already know the secrets are in there, right? So this isn't like being exposed to the masses or anything like that. And so here were the key elements. The performer had to do a slight that looked really good. Um, the performer had to film in dim lit conditions, so not very well lit conditions, on a phone that wasn't very high quality, um, you know, video, at an angle that wasn't too flattering, like down on the floor, like on a bed or something like that. <clears throat> Wearing like just a white t-shirt, maybe kind of wrinkled, looks like my hair is messed up, looks like I just rolled out of bed, right? And um, just looking serious while you're performing it. So just like, right, so like, right? And like, that's it. So those are the criteria. Here's how the experiment went, and here is what some of the findings were that I noticed. Um, I was involved. I was one of the people that performed it. Now, um, most of the feedback for me focused on the technique. Michael, everything looked good, but I think this could look better. Or the move, the move that I did was the Elmsley count. You should do the Elmsley count this way instead. I think it would look a little bit better. Why did you decide to do the Elmsley count that way? That looks kind of weird. You should do it this way instead. So all of the critiques were on the thing that I submitted, which was the Elmsley count, which is what I wanted. I wanted feedback on my Elmsley count. So the critiques were mostly like 90% of the, maybe even more than like 95% of them were on that with an exception of like one or two off comments. Now, same situation, but now let's get a couple of different people that are not white, people with dark skin, um, who are clearly people of color, right? Not white presenting people. Um, let's get them to submit something now. So they did exactly the same test conditions as me, not an Elmsley count per se, but maybe other slights, uh, other moves, other controls, whatever, right? This is something good that they know that they're good at performing. Um, but would look like, you know, they would need feedback on. Now here is where the results vary. Um, when it was a person of color doing it, less than half of the comments were about improving the slight and more about the physical appearance of the performer themselves. So for example, why aren't you smiling? You should smile more. Magic is all about fun. You shouldn't have a serious look on your face. Uh, why aren't you dressed up? Why do you look like you just rolled out of bed? Put a shirt on. Um, your shirt's all wrinkled. You should iron your shirt. Like, that doesn't look presentable at all. Why is your hair a mess? Go comb your hair. Um, why is the lighting so bad? Invest in buying a light for your lighting setup so that we can see the trick better. Um, why is the camera at such a low angle? Set the camera up higher so that we can get a better look at what you're doing. Like all of these critiques were critiquing everything but the, the thing that they wanted to critique on, which was, here's my slight, right? Here's my performance or whatever. So essentially it turned into these... I don't want to call them attacks necessarily, but it turned into these um, these nitpicks and these critiques on the person as as themselves, as as who they are, rather than critiquing the actual slide itself. And so, just to make sure that it wasn't just like a one-off thing, we had a couple of different magicians do this, and the results were pretty much the same. Um, the white guy, me. Uh, was critiqued on the merits of my performance and the person of color were critiqued on their look, um, the lighting, how messy their clothes were. And keep in mind, my hair was a mess. I was wearing a, a, a white undershirt that was all wrinkled. My lighting was very bad. It was at a bad angle. So it wasn't like I did everything quote unquote right and they did everything wrong. We did everything the same. But my critique was more on the merits of my performance and their critique was more on the merits of how they looked you know why aren't you smiling you should smile more like that kind of stuff and obviously the test pool was a little small it was like four people 
Um, but this was just for my experiment. Now, this isn't necessarily all of the results that I've noticed. I've noticed this with a, a variety of different people that post their magic in these forums, women included in this. If, if, a, if a female does the same thing, um, you know, the magician is going to critique her on why aren't you smiling or why aren't you wearing makeup or um, your shirt is low cut. Why don't you cover up? You know, um, we don't want to see that. We want to see magic. We don't want to be looking at your chest or whatever, right? So um, there's a lot of different things that go into this. And this is all unconscious bias. People are not, and, and again, I'm, I'm speaking general, generally here. People are not going into this going, I'm going to find a person of color. And I'm going to rip them apart because I don't like brown people. You know, it's not necessarily about that. Um, it's about these preconceived notions that we have in our minds that maybe we don't realize sometimes. So what my goal of this video is, is to get us to recognize these biases and to do our best to address them, right? That way um, we don't have these unconscious um, critiques of people based on solely how we perceive them and their appearance and their looks or where they're from, what their religious background is, whether or not they're a man or a woman, whether or not they're gay or straight whether or not they're cis or transgender, right? It, it doesn't matter. I want to see the presentation. I want to see their performance. I want to see their magic. None of the other stuff should matter, right? Um, little things, right? Like I work in the magic shop and I'll have people come in. Let's just say like a, like a black person comes into the magic shop and they'll be like, do you guys have any thumb tips? And right off the top of my head, I'm already thinking like, yeah, I do, but bro, you're not going to like them. Like... <laughs> They don't match your skin tone, right? We have these like, and I'm white. I'm like Pillsbury Doughboy white. And some of these thumb tips are even too bright for me to get away with, right? So um, it's one of these things where it's like, why don't we have a range of thumb tips with all different skin tones? That way when people come to the magic shop, um, you know, it doesn't matter what their skin tone is, they can find something that's best for them. That is best gonna suit their hands, right? So as a white male, I have the privilege to know that if I walk into a magic shop, they're probably gonna have a thumb tip for me, right? Um, it's good to know these things because now maybe in my head I'm thinking, you know what, let me go ahead and do some searching online. Let me see if I can find a thumb tip um, company that sells these in different skin colors, different skin tones and then stock up on some of those so that now I'm serving a wider range of people, right? So these little things, they don't seem like a big deal, but these are little things that really, you know, they really matter. Um, as you guys know, I was recently on Penn and Teller Fool Us and uh, I performed with a variety of different acts from all over the world, different countries, different ethnicities. Uh, one of my favorite acts to perform with was Anchal, who is from India. I actually just did an interview with her and with uh, her partner, David, who is part of her production team and everything like that. And we did this long, like hour long interview talking about all the behind the scenes of being on the show and everything. Um, but my favorite part was the part where she talked about not only is India being featured on national television, but a woman of color is featured on television showing all of these women of color from all over the world, specifically in the United States and in like, in like European countries. Um, obviously in India, everyone is a person of color, so that doesn't matter too much. Um, but like in a, a, like a country like the United States or like in European countries, um, it gives little girls of color, women of color, even little little boys of color, men of, of color, it doesn't matter. It, it gives them, you know, this feeling of joy seeing that they are just as important and just as special as like a white guy, for example, right? Um, because uh, we tend to oversaturate the media with, you know, people that look like me, for example, right? white people or even people of color that are white presenting. So um, predominantly white features, even though maybe they are Hispanic or, or um, you know, Native American or whatever, right? So 
The moral of the story is, is that we want to try to recognize these unconscious racial biases and we want to do our best to be as inclusive as possible. That's the key word here, inclusive, right? We want to include people, you know, of all different walks of life. And we want to make sure that we're not excluding people because of these preconceived notions that we have about them. Your English isn't very good. You're probably not a very good magician. I don't want to have you here. Uh, you're not smiling and uh, you're not wearing makeup and you're a woman. I don't want to have you here. Uh, your skin is really dark and you look like a Muslim person. I don't want to have you here, right? Now we're not thinking these things out loud necessarily, but these things are kind of hidden under the surface sometimes. So it's our job, and I'm looking at you white people, okay? It's our job to make sure that we are being the best allies that we can be. And we're, we're not being white saviors necessary. That's another thing that we need to make sure that is clear. I'm not taking that person of color and picking them up and putting them on this pedestal and showing them, look, I was able to help elevate this person. They are just as good as a white person. Like, it's not about that. It's, it's about showing that they are just as good on their own. I just want to make sure that everyone knows that they're just as good on their own because we're not looking at them through these lenses of these like preconceived biases that we have so that's the moral of this video i hope you guys stuck through this at the very through the very thing now i'm a white person i'm a cis white straight male <laughs> right so i have like all of the privilege just like all over me and everything like that so it's very difficult for me um as a person to be able to empathize fully with people of color, women, um, people of different sexual orientations, um, people in the LGBTQ plus community, transgender people. Uh, it's very difficult for me to get in their skin because I don't know what it's like to be in their skin. So my question of the day, and this is specifically for anyone that's watching this that has felt any kind of discrimination, if you're a person of color, I want you guys to sound off in the comment section below and I want you to, if you're comfortable, you don't have to do this, if you're comfortable, I want you to sound off in the comment section below and I want you to share your story because I think it's gonna be more important people hearing it coming from you than them hearing it come from me. All I can do is bring awareness to this. Um, those magicians that I mentioned at the beginning whose names will not be mentioned, um, they worked with me to do this. Re really, I worked with them. Um, they're the ones that have to deal with this stuff. I don't have to deal with this. They have to deal with this. So as an ally, it's my job to make sure that wherever my voice can be heard, like on this YouTube platform with 6,000 people watching, to be able to point these things out and to be able to shed light on something that maybe light might not have been shed on otherwise. It's not my job to rescue anybody. It's not my job to put myself up on this pedestal and be like, look it, I was able to help this guy to realize their dreams. They're able to realize their dreams just as much as anybody else, just as much as me, just as much as you. The problem is, is that they have to work harder to do this, not because they can't do it, but because they have a lot of these roadblocks in the way. The guy that comes into the magic shop that needs a thumb tip for his act, he can't just walk into the magic shop and buy a thumb tip and walk out and do his act. He has to walk into a magic shop after magic shop after magic shop, look online for hours, not find what he's looking for, end up buying the generic one and then having to do arts and crafts to paint it or whatever to make it match his skin tone. He has to work harder to get there than I have to work to get there. Doesn't mean he can't do the, the vanish any worse or better than I can. We can do it just as good as each other, it doesn't matter. But to be able to do the vanish and to get to that point, it takes a lot more work and effort on his end. And that's just a small little example Obviously, at the end of the day, a thumb tip color to most people wouldn't be the end of the world. You can do it with like a neon yellow glowing thumb tip. And if you're a good magician, you can make it work. But what I'm saying is that these little hurdles that we don't have to think of, we have to keep in mind that other people have these hurdles and they experience them. It's my job to try to do my best to knock down some of these hurdles as much as possible and be as inclusive as possible so that we can all 
you know, have equal footing. Because we're all equal. Like, we should all be equal. But sometimes, in our minds, people don't see it that way. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for getting through it with me. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you haven't already done so, make sure to click the subscribe button and don't forget to ring the bell. That way you'll know every time I upload a new video. If you'd like to check out some more magic, visit us at obrienmagic.com and be sure to check out our online magic shop where you will find the latest and greatest magic books, downloads, and accessories.